I hope we're all having a great event so far. Lots of insights and lots of inspiration uh, to go home with after today. Um, so we are here to talk about social engineering and sophisticated phishing. You know, these are the kinds of attacks that involve the use of deception by incredibly skilled perpetrators who are really adept when it comes to exploiting human vulnerabilities and security gaps to really capitalize um, on trust to gain unauthorized access to sensitive information and systems. Now, these kind of attacks are moving moving at unprecedented speed, which is in no small part down to emerging technologies like Gen AI. That's really, you know, really accelerating the innovation curve when it comes to modern social engineering, which is ultimately escalating its threat to our digital society. So it's crucial or critical even for us to really understand the intricacies of these attacks, which are getting more sophisticated by the day in order to really understand how to defend against them. Now, I am joined by someone who is very well versed in this area. Joy Chick is, I think it's fair to say, a force to be reckoned with in the security landscape. Um, she runs Microsoft's identity and network security solutions, running the world's largest security systems across consumer and commercial, which has over a million enterprise billion. users. Billion. A billion enterprise users and almost a billion consumers on a monthly basis. So, Joy, how are you? Great. Thank you, Lucy. And good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, it is actually my first time visiting the kingdom, and it's very much a great honor to be here. Absolutely. Now, we've got a lot to get through in a short space of time, so I'm going to dive straight into my first yeah. question. So we're going to start by, you know, defining the problem and the impact of this issue. So why are phishing and social engineering attacks such a big problem um, in cybersecurity? Yeah, with any breaches, you know, the most important thing that uh, our criminals want to get is your credentials. Yes. And guess what? The easiest way to get a credentials is through social engineering and phishing. That's because, you know, it's just easy when we are busy, you know, it's easy for us, you know, when we're not paying attention, yes. you click on that email link and you get hacked. And I think we talked over the breaks, like, geez, even us as security professionals, yes. we get tricked sometimes. And when it happens, it really felt like, you know, it really breaches our trust, mm. if you will. And, but this happens, and, uh, and actually when it happens, it's not just for like consumers, it's across the entire industry, mm -hmm. whether it's a healthcare, whether it's a government, uh, critical infrastructures, financial industry, yes. and uh, the impact is devastating. Yeah. I think there's this misconception, isn't there, that these kind of attacks happen to people that aren't very clued up, they don't work in tech, they don't really know, but it can happen to anyone. To anyone and like, to every one of us. Hands up who's been, who, you know, who's been a victim of a phishing attack or have clicked on a nefarious link in the past. I know I have. Uh, I, was, I was busy, <laughs> I was on the move, and I clicked a link in WhatsApp, and you know, my phone got exactly. taken over. It was really scary, a really scary time. Um, you know, things are evolving so quickly at such an incredible pace. It really keeps us on our toes, and especially you in your line of work. Um, so how have social engineering attacks evolved over time? And in what ways have they become increasingly sophisticated? Yeah, and I would say the sophistication is both volume, scope, and also just the scale, if mm. you will. And, uh, you know, from Microsoft, uh, you know, we see globally all the attack that happens across our cloud services. Just some data points. In 2021, we see about uh, almost 600 passwords gets attacked every single second, okay? And in 2022, the number has doubled to mm -hmm. over 1,000. Wow. And guess what? In 2023, we haven't finished yet, and mm. the numbers has already quadrupled to 4,000 pass passwords attack every single second. Yeah. So it is really that exponential scale, if yeah. you will. And also at the same time, you know, our criminals are getting very well funded. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, frankly, I would say they're, they're innovating <laughs> at the yeah. speed, just like uh, our cybersecurity professionals, if you will. Um, so they're getting really well organized and uh, many are backed by nation state mm. and the multinational criminals, if you will. And some of the patterns what we see is, you know, you can say the old days or the easiest way is really just send you an email, trick you to a website, and then you accidentally type your credentials and, um, you know, and, um, and you get hacked. Mm -hmm. And that's still probably remain to be predominantly the primary attack vectors. 
So we tell all our users, our customers, to turn on multi-factor authentication, mm -hmm. um, which by itself, by the way, so multi-factor authentication is in, in addition to a password. You know, second factor, you know, that's like SMS, yeah. you know, second factor authentication. By itself, it really reduces the attack by 99.9%. .9%. Yes. However, the you know, cyber criminals uh, then continue to work around it. So some of the techniques is called uh, you know, MFA uh, SIM jacking, because the majority of the MFA is through SMS. So what the attacker does is they get in between your you know, telephony and your, you know, your phone. Mm -hmm. So they intercept the SMS signals and then kind of reply that uh, multi-factor authentication on your behalf. Wow. So that's something they're escalating. So yeah. then we said, hey, then we can talk about, you know, maybe doing phishing resistant MFA, if you will. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, you know, I think we, Lucy, you and I all get a lot of MFA prompts every day. Yes. Sometimes we just get fatigued and frankly confused. Yeah. So what happens, you might accidentally approve one yes. that is not being intended. And then there's other methods, for example, like, you know, the uh, criminals can do something called adversary in the middle fission, which is they can fake a website that looks exactly like the real website and it get you over there and mm -hmm. then store your credentials through that method. And sometimes they can come across as an, uh, from some kind of official authorities mm -hmm. and like, you know, hey, I come from officially some tech support. So you thought you are being helped, but yeah. instead you are being hijacked. Yeah, it really is unbelievable just how sophisticated and complex Absolutely. these attacks are. And like you say, these kind of nefarious characters are moving at the same pace in which <laughs> the industry is moving. And you know, if these, these guys could only just apply this incredible knowledge to good, the world would be a much better place. But unfortunately, that's not Don't how we it all works. Wish you are. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be out of a job, that's for sure. And I'm <laughs> glad to be, if that's the case. <laughs> so let's talk about Gen AI, because you know, this yeah. is a massive talking point at the moment for various reasons. So how a side Cyber criminals leverage, leveraging emerging technologies like Gen AI and machine learning to really enhance these phishing attacks and create more convincing and targeted uh, phishing emails and websites like yeah. you just discussed. So I would say, you know, in the past, uh, we probably, for those of us a little bit more sophisticated, we say, hey, maybe you can detect phishing email from so like, you know, an email is so like a poorly written with the grammar mistakes. Yes. Uh, or kind of in a form, you know, it is, uh, you know, sort of massly produced, uh, you know, so like, uh, I don't need this, yeah. right? So you kind of can filter some of that. Or well, the address looks a bit dodgy. Or the, the address mm, looks a bit dodgy mm. and all that. Um, but now with Gen AI, <laughs> they can improve the quality of the email. Yep. So A, it's a lot more compelling email. Mm. And uh, frankly, they can also tailor that email. A, they can tailor to be more coming from like your work, you know, from from people you know from work mm. because they can actually use some of the AI to learn what's your context, yes. you know, so through, your, uh, through that. They can also tailor to your own personal needs. Like Lucy, if you like, you know, shopping yeah, or sort of specific <laughs> website, they might tailor as if it come from yeah. that specific website that's tailored to your needs. Mm -hmm. so, so they have more context about you. Yes. So from that perspective, uh, you know, I think it makes it a lot harder uh, to detect it's mm. a phishing email and uh, frankly a lot easier to trick people. Yes. And, and at the same time also Gen AI helps, uh, you know, to make, generate these emails Email cam phishing email campaign much faster. Yes. And the fact that you can, you know, using kind of natural language. So even for the, you know, attackers, they actually have to write less code. They have to let less scripts and they, you know, Gen AI help them to automate the phishing yeah. campaign for what it's worth. Uh, so yeah, so I think uh, that's why we see the, you know, the attack patterns that has been exponentially mm. escalating yeah. over the years. It's almost enough to make us incredibly paranoid, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, and I think the rule of thumb here is to really always assume breach. I think sometimes that can be detrimental, you know, something good might come in, you're like, I don't trust that, and you don't, you right. don't click it or you don't get involved in it, and that can be detrimental to the user. But unfortunately, the sophistication of which these attacks are coming, it means that we always have to have our guard up. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk Gen AI for good. You know, we yeah. talked about the, the evil side, you know, the nefarious side. Um, how can Gen AI, no, what would Gen AI also, um, how can Gen AI help defend and protect 
um, in the cybersecurity space. Yeah, I want to say both AI and now Gen AI, if you will. So, you know, one of the things that, you know, at Microsoft, we're really thinking about protecting our customer mm -hmm. is you have to think about an end-to-end -end approach. Because, you know, it starts with identities, mm -hmm. uh, user identity and credentials. But like, you know, you're using the iPad. The device that you are on, whether the, the iPad can be trusted or not, or it's been compromised or not. The network we're on, whether yeah. the network is secure or whether the network is compromised. And uh, frankly, the application you access, the data you mm -hmm. are trying to really trying to protect. So we are really looking at what we call the digital estate of end to end for our customers. So from that perspective, uh, as we looking through all the you know trillions of signals in our cloud services, we can really apply AI machine learning to detect uh, what are the anomalies mm -hmm. and uh, how to then real time, if you will, to help to you know help our customer to detect and breach and uh, remediate quickly. Yeah. And then with Gen AI, what it helps is really to help us to automate a lot of these process, mm -hmm. as well as uh, helping security professionals so that uh, rather than they have to use different uh, security tools, or rather they have to understand the, the logs, mm -hmm. then they can use more human natural languages to understand, hey, if uh, Lucy is being compromised, why Lucy is compromised? So yeah. By simply asking that question, rather than have to be the detective to go through all the tools and uh, find out what's happening. So I think, uh, um, Gen AI really democratized mm. in terms of skill set, skill set that's mm. required to be a cybersecurity specialist. Yeah, yeah. And this is, I think it's fair to say, quite relatively new territory for a lot of businesses. Yes. You know, Microsoft is obviously incredibly well versed when it comes to this. But do you think there's maybe a bit of a uh, apprehension or, you know, this lack of knowledge and education that prevents companies from really benefiting from this technology that ultimately is going to affect? benefit their customers and benefit them as a business. Yeah, like, you know, go back to the phishing campaign, if you will. And uh, we always, uh, you know, talk about uh, education is uh, important. Yes. But uh, guess what, Lucy, just, you know, just, you know, admit it. Do you share your credentials across your user accounts? Maybe. Some of them. Some yeah. of them. But, you know, I've, on my, <laughs> my to-do list is always, you know, switch, you know, on the iPhone, for example, it's constantly telling you when you're using multiple yeah. passwords, and I know it's there. Right. But, I, you but, know, it's, but it's not convenient, yeah, right? Exactly. How many passwords do I'll want do it later. to remember? I'll do it later. So, you know, we talk about, hey, don't reuse your, you know, password. Don't use your credentials for multiple accounts. You know, sometimes, uh, like we still say, even to this day and age, we still put a little password on a sticky <laughs> note on our, like, you know, iPad. I can't computers. believe people still do that. That is crazy. <laughs> right. I don't do that at least. <laughs> or share your credentials with yeah. your friends, you know, because of some services you want to use. So these are some of the basics. Mm -hmm. But the reality is I would have called it, we don't want to, you know, have the burden of protecting our users to be on the users, mm -hmm. right? Like they can have the education, but that's just not an excuse to say, hey, oh, you get hacked, it's because you don't yeah. know. Yes. I think at the end of the day, we ask, why do we need passwords? <laughs> Frankly, it is really, I mean, password is not a magic. It's really about how to identify, like Lucy, you as a unique mm -hmm, person. Mm -hmm. And so we now look ahead to say, hey, what is a better way of doing that? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that's industry standards is called a fast identity online FIDO. Mm -hmm. It is an industry standard. It is a way to use leverage biometric because your biometrics is uniquely, you know, Lucy. Yes. And then in addition, something you have, like your iPad. So both something you are and something you have mm -hmm. is a great way to identify Lucy as a yes. unique person and as a, your credential, uh, but in a way that is so user friendly because you do not have to uh, remember password mm -hmm. at all. So some of the examples are like, you know, Microsoft Windows uh, Hello, mm -hmm. if you will, uh, the Authenticator app. And then now some of the newer inventions uh, that uh, we collaborate across Apple, Google, Microsoft, and the industry is about passkey support. Yes. So it is a you know phishing resistant uh, passwordless method mm. that can roam across trusted uh, devices. Yes. And uh, these are the things we are moving forward as an industry mm. so that uh, we can help our customers to users to be secure yes. and so they can, you know, 
prevent things like these you know, credential theft. Yeah, and it really is about time that this stuff becomes more mainstream, more talked about. Yeah. I was saying to you earlier when we were having a chat, about five or six years ago, I wrote an article for the Metro newspaper where I used to work, which was the password is dead. And, you know, I wrote this article, you know, we're moving on from the password, and years later, we're still using passwords. Yeah. So and I would say, at least now, we have more and more ways for us to accomplish that. Yes. But we still have a ways to go as an industry. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, not everyone is up to date with these latest mitigation techniques. So what, I want to ask you, what role does education and awareness training, such as you know, digital literacy initiatives, what role do they play in preventing social engineering attacks? These are the, the, you know, if I tell all customers, the one thing they need to do is really turn on multi-factor authentication. Mm. Because uh, even like we talk about, you may have for still legacy, you know, applications, they still use passwords. Turn on MFA, multi-factor yes. authentication itself. By itself, it re reduces attack by 99.9% .9 of the mm. time. So I think that's a great start. But I don't think that's enough, no. right? So the next thing we really tell, I think that's more about like, you know, the government and all our enterprise, the commercial customers, is really how do we apply techniques that we call the real-time conditional access risk-based access control. Mm -hmm. Basically, you know, we're sitting here, uh, I'm typically don't travel this far, so suddenly if I'm right now at this moment, uh, I signed in into my work account, at least there's a policy trying to validate, uh, mm -hmm. hey, is Joy really trying to access the work yes. at this location at this time? What we call is an anomaly, if you will. And that these are the things that you, if we can apply these in real time based on user's identity, based on where their location they're trying to sign in, and then based on what kind of applications mm. uh, and all these kind of we call the risk factors or condition factors, mm. then we can really help to protect our customer. Yes. And you earlier talked about zero trust. Yes. You know, one of the key principles we always apply is always use zero trust, what we call assume breach. Mm -hmm. You always verify, and then, then you apply the least amount of privileges, uh, you know. So you only get uh, the, only the access you need yes. with the amount of time you need for the resources you need, right? Mm -hmm. And you always assume breach so that you can detect when it happens and how can you quickly remediate yeah. and also how can you reduce that blast radius or the impact, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then I would say we talked a lot about human identities. Mm -hmm. But as we all know, as uh, you know, our you know, customers move online, move to more and more cloud services, and guess what? There are more non-human identities than human identities combined. Wow. And so how do we think about pro uh, protect the work, we call it a workload identity, mm -hmm. just think about all the services, uh, the microservices across the cloud, how do we protect them yes. is equally, if not more important. Yeah. And last thing I would just say is we still have too many identities. So how can we move to a system so that we have fewer identities using techniques like digital identities uh, that call the decentralized verifiable credentials yes. so that we can have a portable identities so that uh, we can make it uh, secure and uh, make apply across uh, all different applications. Absolutely. That's the way moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Now, just to quickly wrap up my final question, what advice do you have for organizations trying to stay secure in addition to all the amazing things that you've said already on this stage? I'm sure there's a lot of people yeah, in the audience. Yeah, I would just say, you know, AI, right? Mm. Do what I just said, and then really look into how AI can revolutionize for us in this industry. Yeah. You know, AI, I think it, it can be scary, but at the yes. same time, it can use to really help us to secure uh, for all of us. Absolutely. And um, so I think, uh, you know, keep, keep that mind open, mm -hmm. and I think we need to, you know, I would say security is a team sport. Yes, So that's we have true. to do this together yeah. as an industry, as a society together. Yeah, and what a brilliant sentiment to end this whistle-stop conversation on Joy Chick. It's been an absolute pleasure. I did not doubt for a second that this conversation would be nothing but insightful and inspirational, and it's brilliant to hear from someone like yourself who is such an impressive force in the world of cybersecurity. So I want to thank you very much. Let's thank give it up so for much. my amazing panelist, Joy. Thank you. Thank you.